I noticed that. Did she bring that with you? No. She gave it to me yesterday. Where's mine? Where's mine? You weren't soldier boy. Very true, I was not, but you were. <laughs> Uh, good morning, here, Tom. Good morning. I, I had to think for a second because I woke up. I don't know you, but I woke up this morning. And it's one of those like I know I'm not home. <laughs> where I am? Where? Ah, Scottsdale. Uh, so, well, I, was, I woke up to Scottsdale. I am now in Glendale. Where is Scottsdale? Where is Scottsdale? Arizona. <laughs> Where in Scottsdale? Hey, hey, Where hey. some hotel? <laughs> <coughs> some Sanctuary. hotel. That sounds right. Sanctuary. Is that yeah? yeah. You can I woke up. Uh, well, we're not going back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right. Uh, I woke up this morning and I was like, I had a "Where am I?" because it was all blackout curtains. It was still dark, and the place that I'm staying in uh, in Albuquerque, where I'm shooting Big Sky. There is no blackout skirt, so at like 7 a.m. it's just like <laughs> sunlight. It sucks. I don't know why I haven't just duct tape a blanket up there, but <laughs> you know what I am. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that tonight when I get home. Where am I? Where are my clothes? Just be like. <sighs> that's what I'm doing. I'll bring it back to you. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Um, well, good to see you guys. It's been a while. For those of you that I missed in Vancouver, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You are. I am. I am. I was so bummed. I mean, I hadn't been there in two years, and to find out on Friday that you have the vid for the third time. Anybody have to meet? Anybody have the most? I had it once. Who's had the most? Can anybody be three? <laughs> Winning. Never. 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 I should stop looking at parking meters. <laughs> That might be or people's faces. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna stop that. Yeah. By the way, that's an added photo op today. <laughs> Jared will lick your face. Yeah. I might have like amazing community right now. But like, you're gonna get COVID because <laughs> there's a walking petri dish over here. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're just gonna have phenomenal immunity because I've now been through strep. Uh, COVID, my kids got flu last week, so I've had all the antibiotics I think ever existed by pharmaceutical companies in the last 30 days. Uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, beyond that, thanks for bringing us out here. Um, thanks for visiting. It was also nice to get away. You've been in New Mexico, so you haven't had this problem, but it's been like 80 degrees in Austin for the last well, six months. Gross. So, yeah, it was gross. So, I got to bring a scarf. Nice. <laughs> that uh, but let's uh, let's get to chat with you guys. I'll go right here. Oh, hi. I'm Susan. Hi. And, and I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona. I happen to live here. Well, I'm not from here, but I live here. Um, I have either a question or a joke for you. What okay. You want? Uh, both. Okay, so the question is, I was listening to the podcast with Robin Rich, and they've been talking to a lot of the directors and people who work with you, and they all rave about the fact that over 15 years, nobody has seen either of you use sides. So what is your technique for remembering um, all of your lines, considering sometimes it's just the two of you, and is it getting harder now that you're older? Yeah, <laughs> 100%. I think we use sides all the time. Well, we but not during not having yeah. scenes and stuff. I mean, not while we're not when we're filming. No. Uh, but I feel like we we, we certainly when we come in and and, and uh, when we block, which is when we show up on set, and that's when we like work out the, the movement of the scene, where we want to stand, what we want to do, what props we want to use, all that stuff that's called blocking. And when we block a scene, we certainly have sides in our in our hand. When we show back up to film, yeah, we're probably yeah. sightless. Uh, by then, we've we've had time to run the scene both in blocking, probably a couple times in the hair makeup trailer, and then we if it's a it's a, if it's a wordy scene, then I'll go knock on his trailer, he'll knock on mine, we'll run the scene a few times, and then we'll show up on set, and we're pretty much off book by then. Yeah, um, yeah, still with with Gordon Um 
you know, on Walker currently, because I don't always know, well, I don't know any of them as well as I would, obviously, you kind of know him personally and professionally. So, it, it, you kind of, I kind of bob and weave to them, but the way I learn my dialogue is I read it over and over and over again. Like, I read the script a dozen plus times, and so I kind of have an idea of what's going on, you know, um, and then just going through it in the morning, uh, time, time again. And you kind of get an idea of the day, and then the first thing is two pages, and so you focus on that. And the next thing is page and a half, so you focus on that. And I kind of, it, like at the end of the day sometimes, I don't remember a sentence from what we shot, first things first. Um, but yeah, I think with us, we'd run it a lot. Sometimes we'd run and be like, hey, uh, you want my lines and I'll take yours? Which legit happened. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we read a scene, and as we were like going through, we were like, sounds not working. Like, should I say this instead? Hmm. Why don't you read Sam's lines and I'll read Dean's lines? So we did it, we're like, we're done. <laughs> so we called Bob Singer, we're like, hey, we got something for it. <clears throat> we're gonna go through, we're just gonna go through the scene. And so we, we just went and did me reading Dean and reading Sam. He's like, yeah. Like, cool with that? He's like, yeah, what's wrong? He's like, oh, well, I just read Dean's lines and Jensen read Sam's lines. He's like, oh, yeah, go on. <laughs> I have a, um, I, I use, uh, I, he, he reads it a lot and has it like, you know, uh, it's a different way than I do it. I have this weird like association technique that I use where the words or the, the um, whatever the you know, dialogue is trying to say, I associate that with either where I am in the scene, the movement, what's happening. And so it doesn't ever lock in. Like if you ask me to recite the words prior to blocking the scene, I'm like, ah, I don't know the words. But as soon as I marry it to, oh, when I'm over here by the, you know, by the dresser, then this is the, this is what I'm talking about in the scene. So it may not be, I've, I've, I've been very fortunate to have writers and uh, showrunners who allow me to massage the dialogue and put it into my own words. Um, so a lot of, a lot of what you hear is not verbatim uh, on the script. I kind of just make it my own. They give you that freedom. And they have, they have not only given me that freedom, but have encouraged me to do so. Um, so I think that that's been a, a, a really nice relationship that I've, I've been fortunate enough to have so far in my career. I'm, I'm waiting for the time when I'm working on like a comedy or something, and they're like, uh, you said can't, and it's cannot. <laughs> that was Gimbal Girls. That's how Gimbal Girls was. Yeah. These long, long deaths. Okay. What's your joke? Yes. Well, you know how they call relations with three people, a threesome, and two people, a threesome? Yeah. And now you know why everybody calls you handsome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, next question. No, let's dive into that a little bit. Let's, uh, I just want to get a handle on that. <laughs> Are we in Palm Springs? <laughs> okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yes. In the glasses. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, my name is Sonia. I'm from Surprise, Arizona. Uh, <laughs> all right. My question is, so we are all- Wait, it's actually called Surprise Arizona? Yeah. Oh, you're like, and I'm from Surprise Arizona. It's called Surprise. We're about 20 minutes uh, west of here. Okay. Okay. That one almost flew right past me. I was like, Phew. wait a minute. Come visit us, please. Um, and we'll say, surprise, we're here. Okay, my question is, we are all here, and we're melting and, and fawning over you guys. <laughs> he is handsome. You <laughs> are way more better looking in person than you are. It's so, true, it's true, it's true. He looks terrible on camera. It's, uh... So my question is, is who out there musician, actor, do you find that either you've already met or you would like to meet that you would kind of go and fawn over and maybe 
be yeah, be fan fanboy over? I think for me, more often than not, because I've worked and been around a lot of actors and actresses that I really respect and admire, for me it's more musicians. Um, like I've met Eddie Better and embarrassed myself. It's like, oh man. Uh, so I think because... Yes, you did. Maybe for, I don't watch TV a lot, uh, but I listen to music all the time. And so maybe the relationship that some of y'all have with us, where we're kind of always background noise, you know, like, oh, I'm doing the dishes, I'll throw this on. Like, we're in your home, you know, we're in, so when I was a big fan of TV shows, or when I would, like, rewatch movies over and over again, you know, you watch them in your bedroom, you watch them in the kitchen, you watch them in the living room, and so it's always, like, a soundtrack to your life. So I think the soundtrack to my life is literally soundtrack, you know, or music. Um, so probably musicians, like, Dave, if I met Dave Grohl, I'd probably freak out, or yeah, yeah, Tom yeah. York or something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably agree with Jared. I, I'm, like, thinking, like, who would I, you know, who would I go and watch and be in, in, in awe of? And I'm like, the, let's see, what was the last time I did that? And it was when I saw Robert Plant play. Oh. Um, I was just like, <laughs> I, everybody else around me was like, you know, jamming out. And I'm just like, <laughs> he probably saw me and was like, weirdo. <laughs> but handsome. <laughs> Uh, I will say you reminded me of something when you were like, oh, you're, you're, you said uh, better looking in person, which I, I don't agree with you, but thank you. Um, uh, some, some, <laughs> some, someone who we actually saw uh, in real life, and I don't, I don't know if you, we, we didn't touch on it too much, but I just remember going like, come on! Jared Leto oh. is like, Grossly pretty in real life. Yes. Like, I mean, the guy's not, I mean, he's pretty, hey, he's, but like in real life, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. You're not real. You're, you're, yeah. And also, and he's 50. Yeah. And he looks like he's 22. It's yeah. all right. Uh, I'd slap him about that, too. Margo Robbie. Oh. Yeah, Margo Robbie. Robbie at the Scream Awards when we presented to Cricky years ago, and before she had done like Wolf of Wall Street. She had done something, but she wasn't yet like Margot Robbie, Margot Robbie. And we had just presented, and then she was like coming on stage, but we were going off stage. I was like, hey, this is Margot. I was like, hey, nice to meet you. We were both like, oh my God, like she's, there's no flaws. Yeah, she's a pretty flawless looking human. I saw uh, some weird event and happened to uh, walk, or literally brush shoulders with uh, Cindy Crawford. And this was like maybe five years ago. And like, I was just like, Stop it. <laughs> so, so you do have those people that when you see him... Oh, you, sure. You, sure, yeah. Because we see you all as these superstars, and, and oh, wow. there are those times that... Like, <laughs> <laughs> is there that one that they oh, we're, do? We're, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I remember looking at Cindy Crawford as she walked by, and in my head I was like, stop staring, stop staring, stop staring, stop staring. <laughs> and in, in, in reality, I was like this. <laughs> She was like, that is weird, but handsome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank yeah, thanks for introducing me to Surprise Arizona. Uh, I'm going to go way over here, to the very farthest, farthest. Behind you, behind you. Yes. I, I wanted you to know you're not by your lonesome. You have a whole section of yourself. You are completely filled with joy here. <laughs> um, so, I just have a quick question for you. Obviously, there's a lot of folks here that deal with mental health issues and things like that. Like we've all had our fair share, especially creatives. And a lot of us draw on that, especially if you know we're actors or we're narrators or whatever it is that we do, or artists. So obviously, you both have done horror, you both done television shows, and so on. Um, you kind of have to draw on personal things when you're putting yourself into a character, sure. right? So I guess what I would ask is, and I'm sure you've been prompted this before. When you're dealing with a lot of like bullshit in your life, right? It starts to get real fucking hard, it's just right on you. But you know you have to do something creatively. What do you do to decompress after you deliver something and kind of back off and like how do you collect yourself? That's a great, great question. Uh, sometimes it's more difficult than others, as I'm sure it sounds like you know. Uh, but I know after our series finale, the scene in the barn. That took a while. That took a while to, and I, I feel like, so, like, I consider myself a workaholic, 
and that like you detox from them. Like it's usually about two weeks at the end of every season where I still don't feel like myself. Like I wake up going like, okay, what do I like during the pandemic? I totally had a, a work detox. Like I got home to Austin. We both got home, and I was there. So I can't leave, and so I wake up in the morning. Like, okay, where's my spare? I don't have any work. Uh, okay, well, what? And I was like, Jen, what do I do? And she's like, well, I guess we just. Make sure the kids don't kill each other. Like, okay, <laughs> but then what? Like, you know, should I run some errands? Oh, I can't. No, nothing's open. Should I work out? Like, whatever. Um, it takes time. And admittedly, I, I don't have a, a good answer for that. I just accept that it takes time. Just like, uh, thank you for saying deal with mental health, not the struggle with mental health, because it's, it's all dealing. It's your choice whether you struggle or not. Well, that's not. Pain is mandatory, suffering is optional. You know, so if you, if you call it, a, if I call it a struggle, then I feel like I'm struggling. Because it's like, oh, you know, I sprain my toe. Oh, I'm going through this. Then you're like, okay, it's gonna hurt. And it'll, it'll pass. Um, I don't have, I, I, I try and uh, like go for a walk, or go for a jog on a regular basis. Like it's, it's, it's not just good physically, I guess. Like it kind of like spend some alone time out on the road or something. Spend time with my dogs. Yeah, yeah. Um, just accept that it takes time, you know. I don't think there is an easy fix. If there is, I certainly don't know that. No. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have like a, you know, a, a, a bag of tricks or certain tools that that, uh, that I would offer up. Um, I think everything, and also every situation is different. So if, a, if there's a certain situation, I think you just have to be, um, <clears throat> You have to listen to yourself and try to figure out what it's going to take. I mean, uh, you know, there was a, a, a year and a half ago or so when I was up doing the boys and I hadn't, uh, you know, I was working a lot, long hours, and it was quarantine up there, and I'd literally just been stuck in a, a, an apartment that wasn't my home for weeks and weeks and months. And I got home one night late, like 3 o'clock in the morning, and I just, I, I, I think I actually posted it. I don't know why, but... Um, and I, I just cranked up Tool as loud as I could at like four in the morning and it was just, that's how I handled that particular situation. I haven't used that method since, but I think that each situation is different. You just have to, uh, you have to be aware of yourself and know what it's gonna take to get you through it. And I will say this, when you, you kind of touched on how do you perform when dealing with something. The interesting thing about acting, and I, I, I would imagine you feel the same, Whenever they yell action, everything else in the world goes away. Um, it's weird. And for that minute to three minutes that that scene's happening, I'm not thinking about anything other than what I'm doing in that moment. Um, and that's a wild thing to, to have because uh, it, it can immediately silence everything, which is also beautiful. Yeah. 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 I think reflecting on that silence is really important, especially. Um, I know I have that habit, so like, like you said, it melts away, you, you do the same and then you walk away from it. Yeah. Um, I guess to lift the room a little bit, what's one of your happiest memories for you to have been able to pull from for a positive scene? Uh, a scene uh, in a show or like in my... Uh, I mean, this sounds, this sounds cliche, but the like holding my first born son, like becoming a dad and sitting there going, like, I'm so out of my league, like, I don't know what the fuck to do. <laughs> and nurse is just left him with me and Jen's asleep because she's like, instead of three days, like, I'm gonna kill this thing. Like, I don't want to, like, I'm buying some men to him. Uh, pretty, pretty big, oh shoot. <laughs> uh, so, uh, becoming a father for sure. Um, uh, and, doubling back a little bit, remind yourself, no feeling is fine. No feeling is fine. Whether that's your high highs or your low lows, it's not fine. Um, but yeah, we're gonna make that happen. Uh, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a pretty happy guy in general. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the more emotional or the more intense or the more uh, uh, somber uh, scenes or situations that that take a little bit more out of me. Uh, Bringing light and happy and humor is uh, is something that I I, um, I don't want to say it comes easy, but it kind of does. Yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I got a pretty optimistic outlook on things. He does. Well, and yeah. when he does get down, he just goes 
He sees himself and goes like, what can I complain about? <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, <laughs> all right, let's go all the way, I mean, my name is on your shirt, so let's do that one. Yeah. Hi, my name is Mystica, and this is my first SPN con. Welcome. Hi, um, I have a quick question. Can I show everyone my portrait tattoo of you on my leg? I saw it yesterday. Yeah, can I show everyone? Can you show everyone? Yeah. Well, everybody take a look at her when she, you stand up on a chair, do something. Float. Yeah. There it is. Look at that. I've got good company too. I think there's Johnny Depp. There's, uh, yeah. Wait. Okay, that was my other question. And I love you both so much. Thank oh, you. Oh, great. She's like, I just want to show my legs off. Yeah. Good on you. Uh, Mr. Cow, was that good? Cool name. Uh, yes. I love you so much. <laughs> Oh gosh. Um, so, first of all, I love you, Jensen, but this is for Jared. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm going to put a script here. Okay. Uh, dear Jared Padalecki, <laughs> <I've> been... <laughs> <Found him. laughs> my best friend Ellie says hi and that she loved you so very much and that, she's... <laughs> and that she sleeps with a moose stuffed animal every night. She would. <laughs> she... So do I. <laughs> so does Jen. <laughs> She also wishes well, she also wishes that she could say hi to you in person, but unfortunately she couldn't be here, so I'm here in her place to tell her this to you. Hi Ellie, thank you. <laughs> I hope it's a comfortable moose. Uh, please tell her thank you. Hello. Will do. Yeah. Is that it? I, I love you guys. Yeah, whatever. She just loves it. <laughs> Does she have a portrait tattoo of me on her? <laughs> no. No. Um, yes, ma'am. Yes. Right over here. Right up here. Right up here. my face. Right there. The old lady. No. no. Hi, I'm Shelly, and I'm from Sun City, Arizona. Okay. So there's Sun City and Surprise. Sun City. Sun City. Sun City. And Surprise. And Nowhere. And many other places. All right. All right. Um, I have a you do so much for your families by working hard, having to take time, and all this kind of stuff. And you make them happy. What is the latest happy thing that your family just did for you? Is that? Oh, wow. Well. Thank you. I'm grinning because uh, before we came out here, I was FaceTiming with Jen, and she was like, shh. And she pulled her phone out where we have like a Nest Cam app. So, like, when. Yeah. When Odette was napping, you know, we, we could just look at our app and know if she was still asleep or time to get her. Uh, and I guess Odette's been on a little bit of a tear lately. As a five-year-old, who thinks she's 35. Um, and so Jen's like, shh, 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 she's kind of grinning, and she holds her phone up to FaceTime so I can kind of hear what's going on. And Odette's in the room going like, I don't even like mommy or daddy. <laughs> She's having to take about something. She's like, and I, I'm right. Like, no, one's, no one's in the room with her. She's just talking to herself. Uh, that hasn't been said. Uh, uh, she's usually very snuggly uh, and, and gentle. And she's always going, I love you, Daddy. You're my favorite daddy. So that's, that's really fun. Uh, playing sports with Tom, uh, doing Legos with Shep. They all, they're all themselves. Uh, and I love it. And we talk, you know. When the kids go to school, you have like teacher in service or whatever, where you kind of get updates on them. Um, and uh, kids are kids, and they're misbehaving in there. But all the teachers kind of talk about how all the kids are so individual. And I like that. I take that as as a compliment because when they're home, they know that they're being supported. Like, hey, you be you, you do you. Is that? Oh, <laughs> so that's my answer. Just kind of spend time with kids. It's pretty awesome. Um. I'll play a little something real quick. Uh, Arrow, my youngest, uh, was about to be six in a few weeks. Um, Is it six or eight? Oh, what's that? Six. I remember, well, I remember when, I've been watching your show when I started with 65. Right. In 2000. Uh, when it ended, I was 80, now I'm 82. So I watched your, you grow up. Looking good. And I watched your kids grow up, and I can't believe it. 
So I, I, we have a little piano uh, next to the kitchen, uh, a little electric piano, and uh, Arrow's really taken to it. And so I was showing her, and I don't, really, I don't play, but I can, you know, twinkle, twinkle, little star, right? So I showed her how to play that. She learned it in a snap. And then Halloween was uh, just recently, and um, I get a video. I'm, I'm, I'm in, in Albuquerque, Shuka, and I get a video from Neil, and she's like, Arrow wanted you to see this. She has rewritten uh, Twinkle, Twinkle Little Star and has made it haunting. <laughs> I'm not kidding, she figured this out, all the little things I did not show her. <laughs> <laughs> that was a proud papa moment for me. And I, you couldn't really see it, but after she does that little, she looks at the camera like this. And uh, that's those are the kind of things that that fuel us and make make us make us grin yep. and make us you know our hearts our hearts expand three sizes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. You. All right, I think we got time for one more. I'm gonna go. It's all up to you, pal. My buddy in the white shirt. All right. Hi, hey. Very nice to meet you. From Brazil, right? Yes. Yeah. Brazil. <laughs> um, I came all the way here, and it was a uh, very nice because for me, it was like a farewell to it because I'm going to have a baby in January. Oh. Oh. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> That's the end of your trips, pal. <laughs> That's what I thought. And then I heard lots of people talking here and coming with babies and dogs. <laughs> We're family friendly. <laughs> Changing my mind, so it's going to be like great beginning again because awesome. uh, I want to come back and I have lots of friends telling me that they want to come with me. That's so, true. It's, it's amazing. Great. Uh, it was so fantastic. I had lots of questions, but yeah. I asked friends to oh, tell me which questions they wanted to ask you in Brazil. 90% of the questions were. For them, will you marry me? <laughs> Man, women, gay, straight. <laughs> Is that legal down there? Like, just marry a thousand people? No, it's not. They want to. 10% were like, listen, questions, so I'm not going to ask you guys. They wanted to know lots of things. <laughs> just how handsome? Is that yeah. <laughs> No, I just wanted to thank you guys for making this. Uh, for me, it was very important. Seeing lots of people, talking to lots of people, and having the opportunity to be here with you guys. For me, it's amazing. Thank it's amazing for us. Thank you for being here. Thank you. And well, thank you all for being here. All right, we'll see you in a bit. Have a fun day.